Don't get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Let's talk about Young Chopper from uh, Making the Band. He's he's speaking. I don't know if he's in, I think he's still in jail. Uh, he's speaking about Diddy. So he did an interview recently with um, a YouTube channel, Raw Ray Reports, shout out to them. I'm not gonna play the whole thing, y'all can watch it on their channel, but we're gonna play a little bit. Chopper City, Young Chopper for making the band. He's speaking out on the trauma and the drama he went through with Diddy on the Making the Band series and how young he was. Remember, he was the youngest on the cast. He was 16 when he was casted. So he's calling, I think he's calling in from prison, if I'm not mistaken. Cause you know, he, you know, he got into sex trafficking. I, you know, I had to drag him in 2020 when he got popped. Cause I'm like, you know, everybody else was struggling. Freddie P was on the internet around that time crying, saying he was broke. Um, a lot of them just broke. Dylan Dillinger, we ain't seen him in years, but Chopper was living well. I went to go look, I was like, what Chopper been up to? Oh, he was eating steak and shrimp and he's in Vegas living his best life. Then we find out he's pimping bitches. So he was human trafficking and, you know, got caught up. Um, I think he got time. So I think he's calling in from prison because the audio sounds, you know, really prison-ish. So I'm thinking he's in prison calling in, but it was a really good interview. So we're going to go ahead and watch just a snippet of it. Um, Chopper, let's go ahead and listen. But my, but my, my stupid ass, ass I'm, not I'm not really, I'm young, you heard me, so I'm not really thinking in my mind intelligently that these are gifts that I'm getting, chop, he's gifting you, I'm not, I'm not thinking as an intelligent man that I am not, that I need to put things in my name, they was just write-offs from, mm -hmm. from the bad boy company, so after when Katrina happened, and I'm like, I'm like, say bro, I need to get my calls back, and this and that, that. He was like, oh, no, you said you ain't want to come on the road no more. You said you ain't want to do this here with me no more. So I'm, I'm going to say no. And that's, 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 that fucked me up. I, I, I damn near wanted to kill that nigga. Honestly, I wanted to kill that nigga. Because he, 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 he was playing with people's lives. Playing, playing Monopoly with a nigga life. You dig? And, 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 and having the power to control the nigga. That's why I vowed to myself, you heard me, that I never in my life... Let a man control me or listen to a man's ways, Paul. Listen to a man's ways and his dictatorship of how it should go with my career. That's why the base saved my life, bro. For real. Mm. Say, bro, could you okay. say that anybody else that was in the band situation was kind of similar to yours? Uh, yeah, everybody. I mean, but they, they kind of had a shorter end of the stick than me because I ended up having a deal afterwards. They never got a deal after that. Fred said, F and that's one of the rock with Diddy. He ended up rocking with Diddy later and uh, rode on the last train to Paris. Ness was always a great songwriter. So Ness and Diddy always had a relationship, you understand, because Ness was ghostwriting. Babs, Babs said, F Sarah, Sarah, I don't know what's happening with Sarah. Dylan always said, F I don't say fuck everything. Right. Honestly, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people be jokes and everything. But Dylan was the smartest one, bro, because Dylan, from the TV show to to after that, you heard me. He always said fuck you. And to be honest with you, it was well worth it because when we found out later, you understand how much that man took from us thirty million dollars. Couldn't give us a million dollars a piece, bro. Ain't that cool, so? At least. Mm -hmm. 30 million dollars say what what, what what was it that dialogue saw early on that made him feel like that so y'all just heard chopper and this is what i say that diddy is nothing but a, a a vampire he's an energy vampire he has very vampiric energy he sucks people's energy people's talent sucks them and spits them out when I tell you, for all of us 90s kids who were here at the hype of making the band, this show, I don't even know what I can compare making the band to. It was so popular. Like, I mean, 
it was just one of those shows like when it came on on Thursday nights, everybody stopped everything you were doing to make sure you were home to watch it. And then you would go back to school or go to work the next day, college, whatever, and talk about it. Um, he made so much money. Like this show was so popular. So many kids tried out, you know, it was a lot of people's like hopes and dreams. And to find out that he made so much money and these kids didn't get anything is insane. How do you make 30 million off of these kids and not give them something? Like he said, a million a piece. Hell, they really could have walked away with $5 million a piece and Diddy would have still been good. None of them walked away with anything financially. Sad. Honestly, from talking to Dalon, he told me, he was like, he's like, Chop, I didn't feel like it was worth it. So I just didn't, he said, say, bro, it's a certain amount of time of putting in work. Then it's another, it's another situation to getting what you deserve. He said he, he felt like we never got our chance to get the respect that we deserve from putting in work. And that makes sense. It didn't add up. You hear me? And we, we so caught up in the money and the fame that we not really understand that we can puppet it. You did. We're not. We weren't getting what we deserve. He was just squeezing the blood out of a beak. He was squeezing us until he couldn't squeeze us no more. Mm. Just luckily, I'm from a different cloth. You dig? So I, I was able to survive differently, just from the mentality. I grew up rough. I wasn't thinking in my mind, Brad, that I was getting fucked over and controlled and all this here. I'm just happy I'm not sleeping on the floor on Saratoga, on Simon Bali, on Barone. So I'm, I'm just happy I'm. And remember, I told you guys a long time ago that this is what Diddy did. They go to these impoverished neighborhoods, the trailer parks, the projects, the hood, and that's where they find the talent. Because a lot of people in those environments, they have the rawest talent. You know what I'm saying? Because they have nothing else. So all they have is raw talent. So when you gather people from those environments, and then you bring them into like, you know, a, a, a house, you know, a mansion that they would never be in otherwise. And there's food and, you know, they're getting this fame. And then you keep telling them you should just be grateful. And if you don't do this, this and that, you'll be right back in the projects. You'll be right back in the hood. And that's all a ploy to get them to bring their guards down and to feel like, you know, just be grateful that you're here. But in the but they're not understanding how much they're being played and puppeted in the background. So it's just it's really sad how they were treated and taken advantage of. I'm not living that life. Look how it all worked, brother. At the end of the day, all the things uh, around did to people. Look how look how it turned back on them. And when it rains, it pours. You heard me? And it's raining on them real bad. Maybe it's time for everybody that got fucked over to rise like the phoenix. And if they don't realize that, then f*** them too. Because one thing about me, son, I'm going to rise like the phoenix. Um, the news, like um, the, 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 the whole thing, like when you first started getting a wind of it, what, what was going through your mind and how did you feel about it? I mean, I've been to vocal parties. You I, I, as, as a youngster, I've witnessed things that I would, that, 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 that fucked me up. You dig? I never experienced it. I'm, I would ignore somebody, but I've witnessed things just being around. It's a bit. It's a double-edged sword, Wayne. Right? And I'm gonna say it like this here. Say, child. To us. Yeah. You, I'm gonna cut you off. Were you in some of those parties at uh, underage when you were 16? Yes. Have you ever been approached? Approached? Huh? Have you ever been approached in any of those parties to to get involved? No. Fuck no. No indeed. But at the end of the day, I've seen it. You dig? I can't sit up here and say I didn't see shit. I'll be lying. What I seen, I won't see. Was I a part of anything? No, indeed. I was too young, bro. I wasn't, you did, I wasn't really realizing what was actually happening. And every time, like, if I go to the parties in Hollywood and, uh, and all these places, they'd shut me out of it. 
I really don't want to say too much because mm-hmm. I believe this here. If they, I'm not really the type of person that just throw people out there. I don't like snitching. I don't like bitter people either. So I'm not saying this in no bitter manner. You understand? But I will say, I seen things. I love, I love doing this here, Wayne. I love, I love being a rapper. I love cutting up, dropping project after project. I love shooting videos. I'm damn near afraid. To, and it's honest, I'm, I'm damn near afraid to go back mainstream because I know what it come with. The higher you go, the more you can experience things, bro. And it's, it's wild to me, Wayne. I ain't lying though. And I'm not gonna sit, sit up here and. Oh, Wayne. It's sad. It's sad, you know, and um, Chopper was very talented. Like I said, you know, for years I followed a lot of them. You know, Babs is still doing her thing um, in the battle rap scene and stuff like that. Elliot Ness, very talented. And it's just sad that a lot of the, and even Sarah, you know, Sarah's, Sarah's uh, well, she's not Stokes anymore, but, you know, these were really talented people. And the fact that they were used for fodder and to walk to go get Junior's cheesecake. And what's so funny is that the jail that Diddy's trying hard to get out of is not too far from Junior's cheesecake. The same three hour walk that he forced these kids to walk to, to go get him a piece of cheesecake to make for great television. He's now locked up the street from there, not too far from there. So karma is real. And um, like he said, he's scared to ever go back mainstream because he knows what comes with it. And he was the youngest at the time. He was the baby of the house. He was 16. I mean, he used to get on Sarah's nerves. <laughs> they used to always bicker back and forth because Sarah was the oldest and she was like the mom, you know, because she was a parent already. She had like three children. So Chopper used to get on everybody's nerves because he was, you know, a little kid, you know, still going through puberty and just messing with folks and, you know, trying to pass the time. Um, but we all like Chopper because we were young like Chopper. So his jokes were funny. But then, you know, as I got older and I would go back and rewatch some of that stuff, I'm like, yeah, he was annoying at times. But um, it's just sad. And, and you know, he got popped a few years ago for um, pimping and trafficking and stuff. And, again, when I think about that, his situation, it's not to excuse his situation, but he was with Diddy at that young age, watching all this. You know, like I said, a lot of this stuff is learned behavior. So when you're watching this as a child, you're, you're like he said, he was at the parties. You're soaking this in like a sponge. And you're thinking it's just normal to exploit women. And it's normal for women to sell their bodies. So we don't know what he picked up subconsciously, hanging with Diddy and going to these parties that he in turn thought that was okay to then turn around and perpetuate. You know, so it's sad that a lot of these, you know, young people ended up falling into this whole demonic cycle. You know, instead of them being protected by their family and by people who were supposed to mean them well, they weren't. They weren't protected at all. From the band, you know, the rap kids to Danny D. Kane to Day 26, you know, 112, all of them. They were not protected. Like we said in the Zoom meeting the other day, you know, even growing up, we used to think that a lot of these folks were grown. I remember being in high school thinking Foxy Brown was a grown woman. And then I remember we were all like in English class one day. And I think we had a Source magazine, one of the magazines. And they said that, you know, Foxy had just turned 17. And we were shocked. 17? You know, we just knew Foxy was like 25. And we're like, damn, she's only a few years older than us. That song that she came out with with Jay-Z, ain't no nigga like the one I got. No one can fuck me better. She was like 14 or 15 when she made that song. And, you know, when you think about this as an adult, because again, when we were kids singing that, we're assuming it's two adults. We're assuming it's two 20-something-year-olds singing that. And we're singing at the top of our lungs, ain't no nigga like the, you know what I'm saying? And to find out this was a kid singing those grown lyrics with a grown man and even his lyrics in there. He's talking about fucking the brown fox. and But as a kid that goes over your head, you're not even realizing the games that are being played. It's sad. 
I remember thinking 112 was grown. When they were coming out with all that good music and running around with, with uh, Biggie. Only use one of my favorite songs. With 112 and Mace. And when I did my deep dive, that was the first time I really realized these kids were in high school. Remember in the deep dive, I, I, showed, I shared a story about how Diddy would play them and lock them in the studio. And they had school the next day. And he basically told them, y'all need to be in the studio working. They're like, well, you know, we have, we have, you know, we've been in here for days. We had to get to school. He said, well, then y'all walk to school. And left, left them there, refused to give them a ride in the middle of a snowstorm. They had to walk home in the middle of a snowstorm so they could make it to school the next day. Those boys were in high school, but they were presented to us as young adults, like they were 21, 22, 23. They were 15, 16, 17 year olds. So it, it's really, yeah, singing about peaches and cream, eating coochie, that's what that means. And we were singing it, not even realizing. It's just, it's sad. Al, uh, Foxy Brown's album, The Ill Nana. And she was a teenager when that was put out. So it, it's it's crazy when you like really go back and, and you look at all this stuff and you see it through adult eyes. It's It's really disturbing. And I just feel bad that so many people, so many young people were exploited. And so many young people, you know, Shanette in the Discord was asking when we had the Zoom meeting, isn't it interesting how nobody's saying mute P. Diddy, like they were saying mute R. Kelly. And I said, they're not going to say mute P. Diddy because there's too many songs that were, the, that were the soundtracks of people's lives. And I've always kept it real from jump. I'm not muting shit. I can separate the man from the music. Too much of my childhood is wrapped into songs by R. Kelly. Like, I Wish is one of my favorite songs. That reminds me of somebody from a long time ago that ended up passing away. And every time I hear that song, it, it takes me back to a time and space. You will never get me to sit up here and, and lie. Oh, I'm not ever going to. No, I, I will. And I shall. And if it comes up on my playlist, I'm going to sing it word for word. Filling Out Your Booty is my song. Step in the Name of Love is my song. But see, it's easier to mute R. Kelly because he hadn't really had a lot of hits in modern times. Um, he has a wide catalog. He's a writer. But Diddy's a little bit harder to mute. Why? There's so many, so many songs in his catalog. If you mute Diddy, you need to mute Biggie. You need to mute 112. You need to mute Foxy Brown. You need to mute Faith. You need to mute... Mayor J. Blige, you need to mute Little Kim. And the list goes on, total. So I don't wanna hear that. People are full of shit. That's why I never got on the whole mute R. Kelly train. I don't, I don't do social media gestures. I'ma keep it 100. I'm not turning shit off. I'm still gonna listen to it. It is what it is. Mace is one of my favorite rappers from back in the day. Y'all know that. I'm never going to mute a Mace song. I don't care if Diddy's on the track all up in the video and uh, uh. No. Soon as that line drops, you can hum all you want to, come all you want to, money, I'm going to flaunt you, girl, I want to flaunt you, I'm going to always want you when nobody wants you. If I die now, my love will still haunt you. Like, these are songs that are, like, ingrained in my head. So I'm not muting shit. And I, I, I don't think the industry really wants to go there. That's why they're, with this Diddy situation, folks are quiet. Because he, he's been involved with literally everyone in the industry, music-wise. So you'd have to literally get rid of a lot of catalogs. That's why I said it was a slippery slope when they started the whole Mute R. Kelly, Mute XXX Tentacion, whatever you say his name, Triple X. Because I'm like, if you're going to mute them, you might as well just... Mute this entire industry because this entire industry is corrupt. Mute Elvis. He was married to a whole 13-year-old. Mute Aerosmith. He had a whole, you know what I'm saying? He was out here, had a whole 16-year-old girlfriend that the parents allowed 
heard a runoff with Steven Tyler. But when dude looks like a lady comes on, we still rock out to it. So you, you'd have to like mute this entire industry because they're all connected. You'd have to mute Jay-Z. You'd have to mute Beyonce. But again, it's people picking and choosing. Because he was easier to mute R. Kelly. He hasn't had any recent hits. But you notice, you don't hear a lot of people saying mute Diddy. So, I'm not muting shit. I'm having my throwback party in a few weeks. What, two weeks now? I'm having my throwback party. Oh, I'm going to party like it's 1990-something to the mid-2000s. I am muting shit. Music is the soundtrack to my life, so it is what it is. But um, he's still trash. He's trash. And I just, I really do feel bad, though, that all these people were affected. But, you know, I'm, I'm still going to support the music because a lot of people were talented. And it was no fault of their own that they ended up getting, like, the short end of the stick, unfortunately. But, yeah, we'd have to mute everybody. DJ Khaled's wide ass, too. And why, and why is, like, he, like... Outside of that man, um, Jonathan Odie, talking about DJ Khaled being gay and Rick Ross being gay, a lot of people are really quiet. They're not really too much talking about that angle. You'd have to move everybody. Justin Bieber, you'd have to mute him. So, y'all may not want to go down that slope. I just want Diddy and anybody involved with messing up these young people's lives. I just want them held accountable. That's my only wish for the situation, is that people be held accountable. Because at the end of the day, Diddy doesn't own these catalogs anyways. His goofy ass sold the main songs back to Sony. Remember, a lot of these people no longer own their catalogs. We've talked about this for years. Remember, they've all been selling their publishing. I think Timbaland, Justin Bieber, um, for millions of dollars. Who is the company that's buying all the publishing? We've been talking about this. Let's see if I can pull it up. Yeah, it's been going on. Is it hypnosis? Yeah, hypnosis. Since 2021. So most of these deviants don't even own their music. Remember this article? We were talking about this about two years ago. Why superstar artists are clamoring to sell their music rights. Shakira. She stays scamming. I see why she ran and sold. She all types of debt. Okay, we're not doing that. Rolling Stone, leave me alone. Um, let's see if we can find another article. Let's see. Here goes an ABC News article. Why legendary music artists are selling their rights to their songs? Many artists have faced regarding their music catalogs. It's the flip side of the crusade big name artists like Taylor Swift are on to re-record their songs in order to have full ownership of them. Instead, some musicians are looking at the financial pros and cons of selling their catalogs and putting their music in the hands of a team who will manage their legacy for years to come. Our Phil Lipoff spoke with industry legends about why some artists are buying into the trend. I don't want to play a lot of music, but yeah, so a lot of these people, they don't even own their catalog. They they sold it because the, the industry is dying. Everything is move, moving towards AI. Um, we have all these industry plans. They're not really promoting and supporting genuine artistry anymore. So it's like, let me just go ahead and get my lump sum and get the fuck about this demonic industry. Yeah, Diddy been sold the majority of like the main publishing back to Sony. Remember when he was trying to give back um, folks' publishing that were with Bad Boy? Those were songs that, you know, were not number one songs. They weren't popular songs. 
you know, that's what he was trying to give them in order to sign an NDA. And they probably only got like a few hundred dollars a month in streams, if that. That's what he was giving them the catalog for. He wasn't giving them catalogs to songs like Mo Money, Mo Problems, you know, songs that are still being played to this day. He doesn't own any of that. He sold that off. So, yeah, it's just, it's, it's insane. It's insane. So a lot of these folks don't even own their music. They sold everything to Hypnosis. I believe that is the company's name, if I'm not mistaken. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment by the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.